Okay, that's a good noise to start on. After, after, uh, issues. Yeah, after many, many... Okay, guys. All right. Technical issues, basically. We're starting close to yes. an hour late. Yeah. Short session today. Bordering on failure. So you've said three times. But we didn't, so here we are. Short, sh you. short session, Devin wants to die. Who wants to die yeah. last time? Fuck, what happened last time? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, oh my uh, god, you guys! Oh, wait, and we got some oh, we... Goals. we met a we met a Morticia, and um, Devin immediately started flirting with the lady. No, I don't think it was flirting. Also, please <laughs> refer to <laughs> the fucking character and not me. I will smack you. Alsana, Alsana, <laughs> ended up um, basically flirting with Morticia, the um, public mortician, I'd say. Basically, long and short of it is, you guys left Lyrie that morning, mm -hmm. and you traveled the rest of the way to Windsor and, and got there in the evening. Uh, we had a couple of random encounter rolls, uh, there was a um, discovery of a small scrivener's, a uh, small, like, cartographer and calligrapher stand. And little Kenku. Yep, little Kenku, running it. Yep. Um, and then you randomly encountered a shop, you went and got a place to stay at the inn, the Torn Tome. Uh, we've got a couple more encounters lined up. Kane, at the very least, is going to join the card game. He's been invited to. Elaris might be there as well. Meanwhile, Alsana and Calda have gone to the back Drinking room in order to have a conversation. That... Also, we said hello to uh, Dixora, who was the friend of Jeffrey from back in Lyria. Yep. That is where we're going to go ahead and pick up with Alsana and Calda. So, as you guys go back, the... Uh... The light music and the conversation in the front room fades a bit from your hearing. It's not completely blocked out by the room in the distance, but there's a muffling effect to it now. And you are free to say what you wish. So, a conversation to be had. Yeah, yeah, I need to get this off my chest. I'm like, you're... Alright, clear this up first. You're not doing this because... You want to find out information, right? She kind of like tilts her head and is like, I'm sorry, dear, but that's always going to be at least part of it. That's who I am. I, I know. It's not just that, right? What else would it be? I don't, I don't know. It's been... I, I don't know. Well, we're on this journey, so I might as well know what know what there is for the people I'm going to be beside and potentially sticking my neck out for, and vice versa. Yeah, I'll let you stick your neck out, fine, okay, okay, okay. Politics just... Okay. The the okay. dead body thing, yeah, the, you, you saw me with the... all the corpses and all that. Wasn't... wasn't a fan, right? Drew got like blanks and nons and just... Yes, but, um... Well... I'm going to be blunt, uh... I'm not... I'm not up opposed to looting around and doing things. I've already done it. Just been with monsters recently, not people. Yeah, I know. I just, I think I freaked out just with killing people, and I didn't want to become like that. And it's for a reason, and I'm avoiding telling you the reason. But I, do, but I'm just really elongating how I. Oh my. Oh, don't worry. I can already tell that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I said, screw it, screw it, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. Fine, fine, fine. Her name was Rose. She was beautiful. Loves, loves flowers. Good name, fitting name. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, I love her, I love her. She's, she made my life. She was one of the things that made my life really worth it. And this is all past tense. I... I'm not sure. I... Yeah, it should be all in past tense. I just have a hard time putting it back there. She just died. Something happened. She left 
And I never saw the body. And for years, I kept dreaming I saw it. And it just looked pale. And it just looked like her. And oh my god, it was four years ago. Rose would have been 17 by now. Your daughter. Yeah. My daughter. But you hadn't actually seen anything? No, but I... I had adventured before the kids. I adventured when they were all a little mature, a little bit before Tierna. But I... I've seen my amount of dead bodies, and with what I knew, I, my brain went places and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I... I don't know what I did. I screamed for days. I cried for weeks. I don't... Unfortunately, my husband had to be the strong one to watch the kids. I... Oh... Oh, good God. So I didn't know what to do, and I prayed, and I found whomever decided to give me a power to pre I guess, and a power to never see a corpse or think of a corpse like hers again. don't know who did it, and good gods I want to find out, and it's, it's not going to happen soon, but... I still miss her. It's like okay, I was just not it's like death is a constant. I've known that for a while, but it doesn't make it any easier seeing it affect people who aren't prepared. It's never prepared when a thirteen year old girl dies. You're never prepared when you see your brother and sister asking where she is. And you're too scared to tell them. And what would you do should you, uh... Do you have any leads on the cause of her death? No. I spent, it's been four years, I spent three and a half of them after capacitated with grief, just the city guard, and they're not a fan of me. I annoyed them for a while, I still annoy them. And I'm sorry, but you don't know how it happened and you've never seen a body. How are you so certain she's gone? Mother's into it. I just... There were three of them. And then one day I woke up. And there were two. But I mean, there was some sort of progression there. I had gone missing for a day is exactly cause for immediate assumptions. Hi. Son, it's been four years. She was 13. What do you think a 13-year-old girl would do in the capital of Ambar? Mm -hmm. I was like, I tilt her head and it's like, there's a number of things, but do you, you know have one in mind. Do you know what people do to others? And do you know how dangerous it is to be out there alone. I can't say I've had the best grasp on it. I've learned from young to deal with it not having many around and helping those who are and well I picked up some power along the way such that it was never a 
large thought in the back of my head. And I'm sorry, but I'm still hung up. You didn't see a body. You don't know the cause of death. She just was gone for an extended period of time, or...? She hasn't come back. Asana. And you assume her death. I... I never saw a party, I just saw some... Called it just those red. I remember blood. Near the doorstep. And then... Something... Oh god. The waterfront, there was... There was blood, there was her little sweater. Oh, her little sweater. It was right by the dock, I don't... She could have slipped, she could have been thrown, and I never... I don't know where she is. But I know she's not with me anymore. Telling me all this. What are you hoping for? I saw it as. I saw it as confiding into you as someone I. I'm learning to trust. She only gives a slightly surprised expression. Oh. I'm sorry if I came off a bit too far. No, just, about... just unexpected. I haven't trusted a lot of people in four years. Other than your family, I assume. Yeah. That letter to Threshold, oh god, I was gonna burn it. So what made you not? My husband. He found it before it got into the fireplace, and... Thought it a good way to clear your mind? Yeah. Thought it'd be great for coping. Back in... Back in the saddle. Sword on my back. And oath to protect. In your heart. Yeah. This is protection. And called the sort of slides off the um the great sword remember how i said family heirloom yes look closely in the leather and calda like sort of moves up the hilt a little bit as much as she can and just sews the head leather and in half like there's just a name written do you know what that says i can assume yeah never ready to let go of her I don't think I'd be ready to look out of any of them. She sort of slides the sword back on her on her back. I suppose that's the thing of a death. It has little concern for anyone's personal preparedness. Devin, I don't understand what you just said there. <laughs> Sorry, move the mic a bit closer. Yeah, please, thank you. I guess that's the thing with death. It doesn't much care for anyone's personal preparedness. It really kicks you in the teeth. She kind of like stops and thinks. What? what does she sound like? If you had to give it a description. She sounded like a meadow, walking out to the edge of the city and just seeing the grass and the water sometimes when no one else is there. And her voice just sounded like the grass rustling. And her laugh was sort of just a bird flapping its wings and taking flight. She would have been an amazing druid. That's, uh... Hmm. It's a 
she bear much resemblance to you? Yeah. Has my husband's eyes, though. Deep chocolate brown. Her hair is just mind. like mine. Her hair is just like mine, though. Can Osana kind of just like lean back for a sec? You said the uh, music had died down. It's a bit quieter in here right now, yeah? Just a bit. Could she just give a listen? Um, okay. If you want, go ahead and make a perception check. 14. You can add your d4, I'm assuming you did guidance since it's focused 16. Um, yeah, I know what you're listening for, but the only murmur of voices you hear are probably those from the common area. Mm -hmm. At best, maybe somebody in a room over from yours. Mm. You don't hear anything with that peculiar, almost echoing, almost ethereal quality to it. Well, thank you for trusting me enough for that. Thank you for listening, and thank you for trusting me enough to tell you about that prick. Mm. I have not much hang-ups about information, just something I... It's not any one particular person I'm hesitant to speak to, it's just the words leaving my lips leave a bad taste. What do you mean? It's not that I don't like divulging it to people, it's that I don't like talking about it in general. Not because I care what other people have to say or think, or what they can use it with. Simply, I don't like going back through it in my head. That's all. I suppose we're in the same boat there. And, um, you said some being gave you power. You've got your own little bit of magic in your back pocket. Yeah. Have you ever heard a name? No. I just called out and something listened. Never heard a voice, either. It just... came, and it decided that my... decided that the wedding ring was a good place to imbue it. Huh. And if I, um, got curious and tracked it down, would you hold anything against me? No. I've... I've been curious once or twice, so... it'd be good to know. Not good, but it'd be fun. If I go snooping into your daughter's disappearance, what then? What the? It's been four years, Asana. If you can find anything that the entire, that as much of the Unburying Guard as I could do away to find anything, I'd be very impressed. Well, clearly you're not too confident about their capabilities. Mm. No guard has capability, they just... They thought it was a runaway, but no runaway leaves her sweater on the ground. No runaway's 13. Sana kind of like, like leans back and looks like... 13? I wouldn't say none, but... Oh, King. <laughs> she kind of like tilts her head to the side. Also, I didn't exactly take all of my clothing with me when I left, but... Yeah, but she didn't bring anything. But we have other things before us first. Yeah, we gotta... find that shrine, get... look in the city. Let's go. If you wanna go back out, I'm... I'm gonna make it an early night, I'll make the room nice and dark for you. Oh, you've picked up on that, have you? It's a quirk, but it's better than seeing little shadowy things when there's a bit of light coming in, don't you think? 
Oh, I prefer the embrace of the shadows and what could and couldn't be in it. Hello again, Alsana. Great to see you again. You as well. She walks out the door. Alright. You walk out the door and uh, probably into at least some stage of this card game, depending on how quickly they have gone through it. So. Oh, Jesus Christ, what's he up to now? Yep. Uh, so, Kane, possibly Alaris. Whichever, you're both invited to take part in this game. He's kind of just looking at the table like... Well, um... I don't have much coin, but... I think this would be worth it for an entertaining night. Didn't they hand you a coin last time? Like you did, like... I still don't have much coin. <laughs> yeah. And they kind of uh, shrug it off and... Ah, that's fine. Sometimes we just uh, wager interesting things. Wasn't it last week I won a, uh, I won a tart off of you? Uh, one of the Dragonborn says to the human. And he goes, yeah, you did. I still think that you had a better hand than you should have. But, right. And he starts shuffling the cards. I'm Mason. Yeah. That's the human. Uh, that's Rakaras. That's Alidar. And that's Weirwist, the gnome. Pull up a chair. And I'll go over the rules if you haven't gone through this before. Uh, you can pull up. The two dragonborn are kind of that shade of um, mixed um, mixed in between brown that most dragonborn are. Maybe a little bit of sheen of color or metallic on some scales and others. Uh, they're not a rainbow of colors. That's actually fairly rare. Um, of the four people at this table... <coughs> Sorry. Um, you can tell, at least on the human and the gnome, um, pushing towards the older years. They are by no means elderly yet, but middle-aged, at least. Um, Dragonborn, a little harder to tell. Um, of the four, um, uh, Vrakaka, sorry, I wrote this down and did not think it through. Vrakrakros? I, it's a t I wrote down a tongue twister of a name. I made a mistake, guys. <laughs> God damn, uh, I am changing this. Vrakakros. That's what it's going to be now. Alright. Vrakakros. Um, <laughs> the two dragonborn have the um, painted on markings across the brow, but they are... Very simple, a little bit worn looking. Uh, the gnome, similar. The human is barefaced. Um, we lost Conrad. Uh. Of course we did. Yep. Discord hard reset. <laughs> also, apparently, uh, apparently, Kane just like walked into like a dad poker game. Yeah, probably. So, uh, I guess we wait for him to come back. Oh. Yep. There goes John too. Really? Wait, no, John's still here. He just, yeah. he just yeah. joined back in. Oh. oh. Yeah, everybody out of the pool sort of situation for me. Wow. My god. I shouldn't got it. Yeah, but Connor <laughs> just sent me a text and just like, Discord, hard reset, and I'm like, oof. Alright. Yeah. What a night. <laughs> I can't go over the rules with him because he's not here. I don't know which, but like... Some of my internal organs are not happy right now. All right, is it you... unrelated to this, or that's is it because something. of the tech issues? Because no, that's... it is because of the tech issue. Like, okay. like you know how there's like the pressure in your chest, or like, or like a bad feeling in your gut. You get anxiety about things. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a vague feeling of discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, oh, I'm not man. sure where, and I don't know how to fix it. Which really is a good summation of this entire situation. Yeah. That's called into into the news out to out through the mouth until now, motherfucker. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love tech sometimes? Uh. Uh. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, Calda, uh, you, like, take some, find some, uh, cloths or something, maybe a towel left out for, like, washing the face in the morning, you stuff it into the little crack you can find at the bottom of the, uh, 
very simple shuttered window. <laughs> okay, I just got another text from Connor. <laughs> yeah. Whole, whole building's internet crashed. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. I, I. <laughs> I can't. I fucking can't do this. Oh my god. Wow. I just, I just, I just think Conrad back one of Devin's internal wow. organs is shutting down. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Goes down. Canada squad's having some issues. Please hold. Yeah. Connor, do we know which one? Devin, what internal organ shutting down? What? what I texted Connor, one of your internal organs shutting down. Do we know which one? I made a point to say, like, I don't know. It's just this vague feeling in my, like, upper torso. Got it. All of them. Oh, God. I think, I think, I think your pancreas is going. I don't know. Oh, goodness. Maybe, like, a lung. I think you popped the lung, maybe. Oh, wait, yeah, he's my, back, my... he's back. There we go, there we go. Is it considered, considered murder? murder? Hello, <laughs> you're back. Probably. Hey, you're so, back. Oh, hello. that was startling. Yeah, I'll bet. I, I was in the middle of talking, and then Discord just shut off. I didn't hear. What was the last thing you heard? Oh. Uh, I didn't hear, I basically, like, saying the names, and, like, the one Dragonborn name, that was terrible. Yes. And then said, oh shit, and I disappeared. Okay. So, uh, long and short of it is, you can't tell how old, how old the dragonborn are, the human and the gnome look a little bit older, uh, the two dragonborn and the gnome have very simple, like, forehead and, uh, facial markings, uh, the human barefaced. So. You're playing poker with dads. Yeah. Okay. They are about to basically go through the rules, and for the sake of a certain amount of brevity, uh, I will pretty much present them to you all outside the fourth wall. Speaking of dad playing poker, is Alaris joining this? That's up to him. Uh, no. Alaris is just gonna drink. He's never ha really had that much luck when it came to games of chance. All right. <laughs> and um, stuff like poker. So yeah, you're being the audience for now. Um, yeah. The basic he's having thing... like a, he's having the equivalent of like a bourbon and coke. All right. Basic thing is these guys admit that they do do a lot of like home rules. They make up stuff to make it more complicated, more interesting, more challenging. Where actually suits are important, and so is order of cards and stuff. You guys are going to be playing the very the very basic, the kind of uh, game you can walk into anywhere, and people are going to know these rules. So, um, for the sake of this, dice. You roll in the first, uh, it, each game kind of goes in three sets. First you roll a d20, and it says keep it secret to yourself, but you're the only character playing, so feel free to roll openly. Um, after that, you can um, go ahead and place in a bet. Um, people have to match the stake, or, uh, do a little better than it, or they can just be like, no, my hand's not good enough for this and fold. Um, then you roll the d12. And you oh, repeat the bet process. Played this one before. And then a d6. If you roll the maximum number on each die, you should get a total of 38. That wins the entire game. Um... If you roll a 1 on every single die, that beats everything else. After that, you've got three of a kind sets from highest total value to lowest. And then after that, highest total value wins outright. That's the basics of it. Everybody sits down and they, they kind of tell you, you know, first game, uh, this might be your first game, uh, it's a... Uh, and it's the first one you're playing with us, so we're gonna keep bets low. Like a copper each, just to get into the mode of things. If you want to play another round after this, then we can go up to silvers or trinkets or things like that. Alright, you up for this? Conrad is not audible. God damn it, none of you are. Hold on, it's me. Alright, 
Back? Hello, hello? There we hello? are. Yes. Uh, okay. Hello? It's not good when the recording person can't hear you. Just yes. a little. Okay. So uh, what yes, were you I'm, saying? Alright, <laughs> he'll put a copper on the table. Well, uh, let's do this. Alright, uh, go ahead and roll your d20. I've rolled all the others one, already and one, written them down. <laughs> Alright. Note it down. Um, of the others, uh, everybody goes ahead and puts down one copper piece in the center of the table just as a kind of a stand-in for the betting. Um, everybody seems to be Bet. keeping their hands and continuing. He will keep his in place copper piece. Yep. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, are you proficient with uh, cards? Um, I am proficient with... Oh, I thought it was, but apparently not. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much, but if you're... Basically, I would rule if you're proficient with cards, then any sort of check made in relation to a card game, whether it's whether it's you're trying to bluff or you're trying to insight or um, anything like that, you would be able to add your proficiency bonus even if you're not normally. But that's not in play right now, so... <laughs> All right. And... Uh, Everybody goes on to the second round of play. There are five copper pennies in the center of the table. Go ahead and roll your d12. Eight. All right. At this point, Alidar, one of the dragonborn, looks at his hand, kind of does this little grimace, and folds down onto the table. Well, that was awful. Reaches over for a mug, takes a drink and settles back to just watch you guys continue to play. The other three each go ahead and slide one more copper penny into the center, bringing the total in the middle up to currently eight. What do you choose to do? Can will fold as well. Would it not be seven? Nope. Uh, it was five the first time and three the second. Four players plus four uh, DM players plus Kane made the first one five. Yes, I got uh, okay, your fold. Yep. yep, the second one, Kane and Aladar both folded, so now there's three. Um, and on the last round, those remaining three uh, get their last card, look at it, and then lay down their hands. You see, actually, three very good hands you probably yeah you could not have beat any of them even if you've gotten like the full value on the last run um mason takes the pot of eight copper with a total value of dice of 27 we're whist uh, with a total of 23 looks at that and goes damn so close um Rakakros had a total of 20 he leans back. Ah, good game. Another round? Aladar kind of leans over, looks at your cards, and shows you his, and you see that he actually got worse than you. Um, he had a four and then a one. Eesh. Well, it's not the best learning experience. At least it doesn't feel as good as winning the first time on Beginner's Luck. But... We can always try one more time. Uh, Weirwist gathers up the cards and begins to shuffle. Now, we don't need to go to silver. We could just do like a couple of copper each, but it could be up to you. All right. Uh, they look at the mirror and kind of raise their eyebrows. It's a fairly plain mirror, but but functional, well made. And they kind of look at it and scratch their heads. Uh, Weirwist puts down the deck of cards, says, may I, and takes the mirror, gives a little look over, hands it back. I'm not really an appraiser. Uh, doesn't smell like it's magical. Eh. Put it in, call it a silver. Eh, sure, a couple silver. Hey, when we when you play with trinkets, you learn not to get too picky about the actual like sales value. Also, I'm not kind of like we're just we're a just bunch of friends anyway. 
I'll, I'll suddenly looks over, like tap to Lars on the shoulder, and go, "If he starts putting magic items on the table, you stop him." Yeah, of Don't course. Don't listen to me. But you. By the way, uh, none of I just realized I've got the DM screen up. None of those text things are going to be visible on the recording. So Kane Harmon is up for another round. Wanted to know how much Mira would count as. as offered a couple silver and says course works for me at the end. So, I need to remember to read those things out. All right. All right. With the second round starting, um, everybody, uh, they shuffle up the cards, they set them out, and go ahead and roll your first d20. A four. <laughs> All right. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the crying face. Um, Alsana's got good passive perception, right? Well, how's oh, yeah. your passive insight, as it were? Uh, Alsana's passive insight? Yeah. Um, 14. Okay. Yeah, it's not difficult to see. Aladar looks very disappointed with this beginning. Uh, he almost, you see a little hesitation in him. He almost doesn't slide forward um, the uh, one silver piece he puts down as a bet. Kane, do you put in the mirror now, or are you holding on to it? Typey typing. Typey typing. He folds with a shake of his head. All right. Uh, they do the second round, and then they do the third. A uh, small pile of coins, though somebody seems to have put in a hard-boiled egg that he pulled out of his belt pouch. Still in the shell. Um, and uh, everybody... Uh, Aladar actually folds on the second hand once again, with that same look of very intense disappointment. <laughs> okay, now it's just he won the egg. Um... And you see the hands laid out. This time, Vrakakros actually wins with a total of 25. Mason and Werewist tie at 17 each. They had pretty equal uh, values on their hands. Um, Aladar wryly turns over the first couple of cards, and um, yeah, you see some very low numbers, lower even than your four. Uh, like a one and a two there. Um, at that point, they offer, well, wasn't a great run. Uh, we could try one more, or if you want, there's always go fish. You can tell they're they're teasing a little bit. Conrad, Alsana, Alsana will saunter up and uh, go ahead and throw a silver on the table. Oh. Well, young lady, you want to join in, then? Uh, it looks fun. Plus, you lot seem easy to read, so, well, figured I might as well make some money while I'm here. See a couple of eyebrows, a couple of brow ridges go up. Right. Well, like a <laughs> like young lady with confidence, sit down, pull up. Uh, keep the silver for now, that's after round one of picking a card. You've got a little leeway there. All right, Kane is going to roll to himself here. It'll still be on the recording. Oh, no, it, no, it won't. Ha. I put up the DM screen. Oh. Actually, I might take the DM screen down. I'm not going anywhere with it right now. Yeah, I was going to say, you're not exactly pulling out, like, the monster that's going to crash through the wall at this point, are you? Yeah, I'll just disable that. Okay, uh, you guys can roll to GM, if All that right. helps. I'll be able to see it. The recording will see it. And you guys can keep it a secret, and I will not read out your numbers. Again, keep in mind, at any time, you can, if you want, uh, Alsana, I'm going to say now that you're an active participant, if you want to do insight on anybody, you have to actively oh, yeah. roll. Yeah, that is, this is, if you had not mentioned that she, like, gave a look and saw, like, yeah, that guy doesn't have much, I would not have, I probably wouldn't have jumped in. Okay. Is this how you do it? How do you do the, sla like, how do you send to GM with a... Uh, scroll up to the little green thing. Uh, you can just, um, oh, alright. You can, I think, hover over your thing, uh, the dice roller. 
you can click GM on, and then you can just go down the numbers and click a D20. Okay. You'll have to make sure you click GM off if you plan on using it again. All there right. you go, that's the thing. Oh, it worked, okay. Um, yep, it worked. Just waiting on canes. Alright. Okay, first round goes. Um, you see all four of your table I... mates. Uh, go ahead and put forward, like, one silver piece. Um, Conrad is typing. Alzana puts forward the silver as well. Okay. Yeah, remember that uh, you can... Kane, remember that you can get three of a kind if you're real lucky. But you can fold if you'd like. Kane Harmon is poor. Okay. So Kane folds on the first hand. Leans back. Pinching bridge of the nose. You see uh, Vraka Kroos glance over. Rotten luck tonight, huh? Well... The game goes on. Also, I'll give a glance around the lot of them. Alright, are you after an insight check? See how they're doing? How they're feeling? Okay, go <laughs> ahead and roll an insight. That's an 8. Uh, that's an it is still 2GM, yeah. but that's fine. So you rolled an 8 on insight. Uh, you look around pretty oh, stoked. Uh, freaking guidance. Right. Okay, do your d12, uh, d4. Blah, blah, blah. D12, I'll take it. <laughs> D12 is the next round of cards. Hold on here. Uh, three. So, uh, 11. Yeah, um, you've got a couple of Dragonborn, a little bit hard to read, and somehow those markings are kind of throwing off a little bit. It's not that they change the shape of the face, but they sort of change where your eyes kind of get drawn to. They accentuate different parts. Yes. Uh, Mason, the human, um, is sitting there. Uh, he doesn't have those markings, but he has a surprisingly good, like, poker face to him. Um, Weirwist, again, you have the little pro trouble of the markings, and you kind of notice just, you know, watching from a distance, he tends to play every single game with this very slight little smile on his face that doesn't change no matter what kind of mm. cards he seems to be putting down at the end. Alright. All right. Uh, do you want to go ahead and roll a d12? You've put your silver in, so there are five silver pieces on the table at the moment. Um, I'll just keep rolling to GM for the heck of it. Sure. Oh. Okay. Alright. Uh, you've got that. They have all got theirs. Uh, you look around. Nobody seems to be folding. Um, in fact, uh... Mason goes ahead and pushes forward two silver pieces, and Werewist, who is about to push forward one, ups his to two as well. Oh, so I'm looking to go. Rock across. Uh, very well. And Aladar go up to two each. You as two? Also, I'm going to match the two. Alright, 15 silver sitting in the center of the table. And the last card gets to go. Uh, that is a d6, unless you wanted to check anything first, that's fine. If she could throw another insight just to give another glance around. Sure. Go ahead and give another one. <laughs> <laughs> D4. Alright, ten. I kind of run into the same problems as last time. Yeah, you don't know yeah, 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 yeah. No, do save the breath. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm sorry. D6. Go ahead and do your D6. Uh, Alright. Uh, you do your D6. Um... Add up your totals. Uh, do you want to... Um, basically, I'm going to ask something terrible as a GM. Do you want to attempt to cheat? <laughs> because technically that is an option, and I'm not sure that it occurs to many players per se. Oh no, I've, I've been considering yeah. exactly how, but she doesn't exactly have a lot of... Um, Sleight of hand? Yeah, upper sleeve things. Yeah. It always occurs to Devin. Okay, good to know. Um, 
Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm just going over a sheet and make sure there's nothing else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, she'll kind of sigh and put the cards down. All right. Uh, you put your cards down. Um. Can you do a quick perception check? No guidance. This is just to see if you spot a thing. You spot Werewist do this funny little uh, flick of the fingers, and you just saw one card go down his sleeve and another appear in his hand almost simultaneously. But with that, the four of them each lay down their hands, count up their cards, and you see really an excellent spread of numbers. Nobody got the max or min or three of a kind that are instant wins. But um, Werewist and Mason actually tie at a value of 32 each. Aladar had 24, Vrakakros had 22. And you put down a total of 14. 14. Two fours and a six. I was close. Okay, my roll was a two. Yep, your roll was a two. Yep. Um, also, I was just going to give it a look and go. Mason, my dude, did you see that? Uh, he's in the process of reaching for a tiebreak around card. See what? Oh, just a. I mean. Uh. His sleeves look a bit stuffy, don't they? You. Are gesturing at Werewist, I assume? Yes. Yep. yes. <laughs> Mason gives him a look. Werewist gives you a wide eyed look, looks back. I'm sorry, what? Miss, there is no need to make accusations. No, there's not. <laughs> um, and really, there's no need for. I mean, it's a warm day out. You could roll up your sleeves, right? We're all friends here. Miss, it's a uh, night. And it's been bitter cold all day. I don't know where it, uh, the frozen hellhole you come from. Mm -hmm. Well, just, uh... I suppose you could just give a little, um... Show uh, of character, then. Mason is holding up a Peace hand and going, uh, Now wait, we're with a friend. There's really, you know... I know the stereotypes about gnomes, but that's kind of insensitive. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's... There's... there's. I've been one for a friendly round of, um, cheating and underhands. No, really, miss. This isn't... This isn't, uh... Look, you lost, okay? No hard feelings. It's just a game. You don't need to go, like, pointing at one of the winners and trying to throw them under a cart. Yeah, just, uh, we're gonna do a tiebreaker, and may the best man win. Or gnome. Whichever. Um... Does the liar see any of this? You can roll a... Uh, what is your passive perception, actually? Because you were not actively involved. Give me a sec. Um... Again, uh... I was... Give, give me a sec. Yeah, my sheet needs to load for a sec. Okay, um, do you remember numbers? Not quite, because I'm pretty sure I have, uh, uh, I have, uh, proficiency in perf perception, so... Also, uh, just give me a sec. Also, I'm gonna, like, look over for a sec. Snap her fingers. And just a small puff of wind out from under his sleeves. Okay. Um, oh my god. You are being fairly focused. I will ask for a basic spell casting check. That's your wisdom. Uh, there All will right. not be guidance because you're ca using an action to cast that spell instead. Okay. Uh, so just normal wisdom. Alright, 12. Well, you kind of make his sleeve billow open a little bit. Um, yeah, no. Uh, Mason doesn't seem to notice anything, and Werewist kind of grabs a sleeve and shakes it and uh, goes, Hey! Was that magic? Was that what? Was that magic? No, come I don't on. Know. You that... just don't need to go messing with me. 
Look, if you're not going to behave yourself, we're going to go and talk to the owner of this pr of this establishment. Can also just make an insight check real quick to just double out, double down on her suspicions. You can. What are you saying ahead. right now? Yeah, go ahead. Tap the side of her head real quick. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. You insight and uh, from the looks of things, with a total of twenty five, um. Werewist is lying, but Mason believes him totally. In meta terms, I rolled a 13 for Werewist's deception and a natural 1 for Mason's insight on him. <laughs> so. Motherfucker. You don't seem mm -hmm. to be gaining much ground. Do you want to keep attempting or allow them the tiebreaker? Ah, oh, fine. Continue on your cards, then. Young people these days. No, I know. No kidding. Yikes. <laughs> they both roll exactly the same number, which is a four. So, so they again... Real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Well, I guess this can happen beforehand. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so they look at the number, they look at each other. Damn. Well... Split the pot. A little tricky. There's a. Eh, we'll divide the one silver into copper. Right. Split the pot and they reach out, shake each other's hand, and scrape the silver into two separate piles. Asana um, is going to, as she's. Uh, she's going to, like, walk from the table. Mm -hmm. And just as they're kind of not. She'll, like, bend over underneath another one, like, to get something. Mm -hmm. and then, boop, into a spider. All right. Spider Alsana. Yeah, the world is so like, different. Hey, I was like, uh... Elias is gonna put a is gonna sit is gonna where um, Alsana was sitting and slide a slide it slide it. And they look at you. Oh, forgive her. She's a bit. Sorry. Are you hoping for a game? Yeah, I was, but um, if you guys are well nonplussed about not going another round, then uh, I think we can do. I think we can do one more. I wouldn't mind, hopefully, uh, getting to the third round this time. Well, yeah. All right, and they'll go ahead and get set up for round four. So, each of you go to GM, since you're both being involved here, and roll during this. a d20. And yes, during this, you are a spider, and you're scurrying across the floor. And up the gnome's boot. All right. Uh, there is really no stealth needed. The gnome does not notice you're on the outside of the boot. Okay, um, John, you do need to go on roll to GM, but for time being, I guess that's out in the open. I, I, uh, I don't remember how to roll to GM. Okay. You either type in GM roll, one word, or on the dice on the side, click the GM button. Yeah. Okay. One. Regardless. Is it GMR work? No. Keep that, keep that out, make, put that out in the open. Alright. Um, so you can try that for the next round. But for now, um, yeah. everybody kind of looks at their hands, looks up... Uh, so, are we thinking copper or silver for this round? We do have a new player. We did do silver for the last it's one. Silver. We saw how that went. Mm. That's, well. I wouldn't mind some silver. Alright, we'll go ahead and... Uh, you are breaking up and lagging badly, Conrad. Yeah. Alright, each of the four around the table puts forward a silver piece or equivalent in copper for a couple of them. I assume that each of you can match that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Alright. And we go forward into round two. Make well, your Sana is going to best she can. Uh, well, Sana is best she can. Going to... uh, Ariel. I'm sorry, what? 
What, what was I supposed to roll for this next one? A d12. Alsana is... I'm going to do her best to stealthily scurry into his right. um, uh, shirt sleeve where the card was. All right. Um, I do not know what the dexterity of a spider of a normal size a, is. A, Probably a, good. A regular spider's stealth bonus is plus four. All right. Uh, roll a d20 plus four. Mm. Six. Um, <laughs> these numbers. These fucking numbers today. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Long you... squashed. Yeah, a little bit because as you're going for the uh, for the sleeve, in like the blink of an uh, eye, a card suddenly switches places, and the one going in knocks you further in. Um, I'm not gonna say that you take damage per se, but one more good knock like that, and suddenly that sleeve is going to tear as Alsana becomes normal size within it. Oh God. Um. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, so, but she's in the sleeve right now? She is currently very deep in the sleeve, like, to his elbow, and the fabric is kind of moving and tightening uncomfortably. Um, I'm gonna real quick see if he- nope! He does not seem to notice little spider movement inside the sleeve. Perhaps he assumes that it's just the fabric rubbing. Um, if she can, she's gonna slowly make her way onto a card. Okay. Get up to a card, and you cling. All right. Um, meanwhile, if she can, if the spider spider does have dark vision, if it can find like an ace or a whatever, like a nice card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, everything is weird at this scale, but you do find a card that looks fairly promising. All right. Um. At this point, I'd say that for second round, pay uh, going into the pot, um, Aladar again folds at this point, and actually so does Mason. They're a little bit uncertain about the quality of their hands. Which leaves uh. Rakakros and Werewist, each putting in one more silver piece. Do the two of you, Kane and Alaris, match? Fold? Or up the bet? <laughs> Antsy. Kane will match Antsy. just because he... Sorry? Go ahead, John. Uh, yeah, Alaris is gonna ante up, okay. uh, one more silver. Okay. So that's six silver, plus seven, eight, nine, and Kane is doing one more? Discord was terrible for you right yeah, now, you're comrade. Lagging there. I assume yeah. yes? Is it a yes? Yes or no? Yep. Okay. There is a total of 10 silver in the pot and four players. Go ahead and roll a d6. All right. Okay. Alsana, clinging to a card. Clinging to a good card. Card doesn't move. No cards switch in or out this round. And with that, everybody go ahead and total up your values. I don't think anybody got three of a kind. Nobody got the max, nobody got the minimum. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Okay, what are you guys' totals? Kane with a hand 20. of 25. Elaris. Uh, yeah, um, Elaris has a hand of 23. Of 23. Uh, you put down your hands. Uh, Weirwist is kind of in between you with 24. But Vrakakros, uh, comes back the winner with a hand of 29. Dang. If, if the spider hears this kind of going on, it'll just slowly make its way back out. All right, go ahead and do one more d20 plus four. 15. 15. Okay. Yep, nope, he doesn't notice at all. Yep, uh, and just, just web the send down off the sleeve. Yep. Onto the floor as they kind of shake hands, congratulate each other on a good game. Uh, they tell Kane, glad you could finish one. Uh, tell Alaris that uh. it's a 
That's a good hand. Good hand for your first. Yeah. That stack of plays ain't bad. Mm. Never had much luck with them, with uh, games of chance anyway. Huh. Eh, maybe we'll teach uh, Calda. We'll get a bit of practice in. Get a bit more practice. Well, uh, that's me done, and he, uh, Rocker Cross gets up, stretches. Uh, there's little calls of, oh, oh, you won one, and now you're, yeah, I won one, and now I'm done. I'm gonna call this quits while I'm ahead. Besides, I gotta get home. Early morning tomorrow. Well, see you guys around next week, same time, same place. Of course, sure. Wouldn't miss it. I'll make sure to bring some of my wife's pastries to put in the pot. Just silver is kind of boring. And he saunters off. Okay, he puts his hands up. <laughs> Sounds like he didn't bring it this time. Come on. I did. They won them before you showed up. They're all eaten. Is anyone, is anyone willing to part with the egg at least? That's a consolation prize. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Um. I believe Mason was the one with the egg, right? Mason won the first hand, the first hand so. of the egg in it. All right. Yeah, I think uh, so. He's got it. And he says, tell you what, quick round. Let's see who gets it. Just the egg, no extra bets. Take your three cards. Roll a d20 plus Good a d12 heads. plus a d6. Actually, I'll just do this on the computer. Might as well let this thing... Fuck me! Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> oh my oh, fucking god. He just looks at the hand, oh. looks at you. you got one. Tiebreaker? Roll 1d4. Damn. My hunger knows no end. Ooh. Oh. That was a jam roll, but that was a three. Ah. Alright, yes it was. And, uh, looks at that. Damn. Well, I did say I'd play for it. And he rolls the egg on over to you. Kind of... yep. And he'll roll, a silver to... <laughs> he'll roll a silver over to him. Thank you. Silver's not worth an egg, Goodness. but, uh... No, but the internet is. Yeah. Well, I'll take your oddness. Play I'll another game with you. <laughs> <laughs> that we did. If you ever want to risk it again, uh... We might be around town. We like coming here and playing every week. About this time. A little earlier in the day, but... Hey, if you're in town that long and we're coming back around then, you look us up. Yeah, we'll promise be here. pastries. I'll see if I can. Not every day, but when we can. Hmm. I should probably head off too. Mm, stands up and stretches. You hear the back crack a few times. Oh, it's later than I thought. Well, later. Indeed. All right. With that, Alidar and Werewist also say their goodbyes. Werewist with a little suspicious glance around to see if the uh, to see if a certain druid is waiting to accost him as soon as he steps outside the door. So I fun assume. fact. Good. Mm -hmm. Were you? There's, there's a black cat currently trotting after. Okay. Oh my god. How long are you gonna follow him? Okay. He's going to fuck bed. Yep. So he gets to his house. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um. Do a quick survival check for sense of direction more than anything All else. Right. Uh, um. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. You're able to kind of mark in your mind the uh right turn, left turn, and loop around, and you're you're pretty sure you're gonna be able to find your way back. Uh, you follow him through winding streets. Uh, to Kind of a kind of a street or two where the doors are kind of built a bit smaller, the roof's a bit lower. Seems to be like gnome and halfling territory, should there be halflings. Uh, there's a little bit of a smell in the air of um, oh, of uh, oh, potions and and uh, powders and um, metal. Just a uh, wood and oils and so on and so forth kind of kind of the smell you get if you come across a whole bunch of uh crafting areas all clustered together you see him walk up to 
one particular, like, fairly nondescript door among the rest. You mark which one it is in your mind again. Um, pull out a key, turn the lock, step inside, a little bit of ca candlelight inside the, uh, the building. Shuts the door behind him. Hear the lock click back in place, the faint murmur of voices inside. Oh, he's got a family. That's cute. Alright, and Cat will make its way back. Alright. You now know where Werewist the Gnome lives. You return, <laughs> you return to the Torn Tome. It's getting later, things are starting to wind down a little bit. Uh, all of a sudden I like walks up to the innkeeper mm -hmm. and she just goes and goes um would you happen to know a good place in town to get some tomato juice mm, this time of night uh not right now just oh well I don't know about already juiced but you might be able to find some tomatoes a bit out of season but you know Someone's bound to have a greenhouse somewhere. Okay, uh, anything else red? Market. Paint. Easily. Um, any kind of paints, dyes, there's the workman's quarters. Is there anything you need to use it for? Just a personal project. Um, yeah, well, is it, of... is it going on, like, uh, your face? Is it going in cloth? Is it going on uh, wood or glass or, you know, it, it is oh, going to change. It's a bit of a painting of a small little uh, box I have. Oh, all right. Uh, wood paint. Yeah, craftsman's quarter. Easy. Um, it wander around in there, ask about. I can't really recommend any anybody in particular, but... Um, but also, you've reminded me, I've been meaning to ask since we got here. Um, what's the, um... Well, what is the, I guess, I've, a lot of people have a face paint, and mm. not uh, seen that much outside of here. No. Nah, is that a it's trend? Not a, it's not done too much outside of here. I mean, Azora, among Dragonborn, it's a bit of culture, a bit of a trend, especially in this city. It's, uh, pretty sure it started here. Um called Sakriogas. Scale markings. Loosely. It's kind of like... You know the skinned people. Uh, makeup. People with skin, not scales, basically. <laughs> she usually looks like skinned people. Oh, you mean... Yes, you. Like me? Yes, the stuff around your eyelids Blush. and so on. Exactly. Uh, blush. Sure. Blush doesn't mean much when you've got uh, scales all over your face. I mean, hey, we don't tend to change colors the way you do, so we don't really need to cover it up. Uh, assuming that's what it is. Anyway. <laughs> She's like, like mildly entertained by this um, understanding of, of, of like humanoid, like fleshy part, fleshy faces mm -hmm. from the dragonborn. It's, uh, well, it's a lot like that in some ways. It's, uh, makes you, I don't know, about fancier. Maybe a little more attractive, maybe a little more presentable. It's creativity and, honestly, a little bit how much time you can put into it. Uh, don't worry, dear, I get the, and she kind of, like, flicks one of the beads in her hair. I get the idea. Probably a lot like those, actually, you're right. Anyhow, mostly Dragonborn again, but anybody yes, in the city I... is welcome to join in. Yes, I've noticed it with a few um, other, what do you call them, um, skinned humanoids? Uh, okay, look, that's not like an actual term. I was confused and trying to be descriptive. I, I'm just... The word has some um, other implications that you might need to be aware of. Yeah, thinking about it, skinning a rabbit, that sort of thing, yeah. Yes. Scaleless. That'll probably be it. Anyhow. Yeah, usually just 
across the brow, bridge nose, eyes, cheekbones. I think some of the younger folk lately have been doing little, uh, little things about, like, beneath the mouth and under the chin. It's kind of, mm, kind of out there. It's a little bit wild, okay? Sakuryogaz is meant for the upper part of the face to draw attention to the eyes. There's really no reason to draw attention to the mouth. <laughs> it all sounds like chuckles to herself. It's like, well... <laughs> I mean, humanoids wear lipstick. Yeah, well... <laughs> not Dragonborn. Comes with not she... having that much in the way of lips, probably. Anyhow. Yeah, like, oh, I think you'd look lovely. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. But, if you're curious about it... Uh, most of the, uh, most of the regai, the pigments and paints, pretty safe for people without scales. The ones that aren't are usually pretty well marked. You could probably find, uh, some kind of beauty shop somewhere. Most of them specialize in it, if you want to give it a try, or if you want to buy a few pieces or paints and do it yourself, though. I'd recommend getting a professional to do it first. Yes, I... It can be a bit tricky without practice. Oh, I, again, I get the gist. Um, these didn't exactly... Uh, they were hard to get the hang of, and again, flex the feed. Well, that's about most of it. Anything else? Uh, well, I guess, is there any other um, weird idiosyncrasies of a town full of scaly people? Eh... <laughs> uh. I guess no more than you'd probably find in a town full of any other people. I'm guessing the shampoo business isn't exactly booming. Yeah, let's say there's a reason why those beauty shops tend to specialize and make money more on the sacriogas than on the, uh, whatever it is, what is it you call it? Air. Barb? No, no. Barber shop? Yes. See, it's been a while since I talked to Jeffy, but he mentioned it once. Haircuts. Yeah, barb... No, that's not right. Barbary. No. He, that was something else. Barber... Barber shop. Yeah, the practicing that. I mean, there's... Hairdressers. That's probably about it. There's those who still do it, of course. I mean, there's more than just Dragonborn here, but... Eh. If you want to make money, you'd better have some regai in the back room at the very least. Mm. Just like, just like, oh, um, are you are you much up to date with politics? Politics. Eh, uh, kind of does a side head shrug. I mean, you hear people complaining about them, position like this. Mostly, I just kind of let it carry on as it wants. I'm just wondering, um. Has the queen been up much recently? Eh, uh, not really. Not that I know. Reason? Ah, oh, just curious. She's... Has she started taking up dating again, or...? She wanted to keep hmm. that to two. Well, I search things. Uh... It's not been really that long. I mean, I know she's queen of everything, but, uh... No. As far as I know, she's not. Hmm. Ah, just a curiosity. Eh. Yeah. It's just bad luck, and... Well, what can you do? Oh, and one last, um, so much in the way of, uh, I, I got a bit of a whiff of it, but is there like a, um, I suppose like an alchemy area or section of this town? Oceans and <laughs> like? Rule of thumb, where you find gnomes, you'll probably find an alchemist's lab. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Oh, one last one. Can you breathe fire? No, I can't. Can you breathe any other element? 
No, I can't. No. Oh. Is it is it a is that a misconception? Is it insensitive to ask or? Oh, well, it's kind of uh, some dragonborn. Yes, others no. Depends on how strong one particular like heritage comes out. Most of us are enough of a mix that they all cancel each other out anyway. You sure you've never gotten really bad heartburn at some point? You never right. know. Have you ever brought a body life back to life? Ever raised a skeleton? Or is it insensitive to ask? Mm. I'm very opposed to those kinds. Mm. Um, I've made them talk, though. Mm -hmm. Ever sacrificed a humanoid to raise a demon? Maybe a double? Mm. No, can't say I have, and... Made a like deal said, with I'm... any? No, I'm rather personally opposed. Although I know someone who made a deal with a, um... Not a devil or a demon, but a... Being, a powerful god. Yeah, some people are damn fools and do that. So, yeah, looks like that's, I think, with that. no, they're just damn fools. Never trust what you can't see. Anyhow, I think that puts you at about three one last questions, so want to make it a fourth, or are we good? <laughs> uh, uh, you've gotten me. No, I think that's about it. Right, well, have a good night. Breakfast bright and early in the morning. If you sleep through it, you miss it. Sounds good. I left the others now. He, she kind of waves at you and uh, goes on, carries on, um, kind of keeping things going with the few patrons that are still left inside the room. The by this time, the musicians have packed up, and uh, you might catch a glimpse of them as you walk by a door, just eating a meal in the back, possibly part of their pay. Mm -hmm. And. She'll head up to the room. All right. Um, it's not really an upper floor sort of situation. It's like a back hallway set right. of rooms. Uh, but you head back there. Uh, Kald is already in there, possibly already asleep. You see a towel. Yep. yep, a towel from the wash bakes and kind of stuffed into the small chink beneath the window shutters. Block out a bit of light. Alsan uh, is like, oh, but then over it's like, mm, not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, and you thoroughly block any sort of illumination from coming in from outside. And, the, and when you went out as a cat, it is actually fairly well illuminated with all of those lamps and lights fixtures throughout the city. <laughs> Still some fairly deep shadows, uh, but kept uh, kept pretty well, um, kept pretty visible. I assume that Cain and Elaris are also gone to sleep, gone to bed. He might be quietly checking. Oh. Quietly Girls. checking something. Yeah, there's out. John dropped out, but also yeah. Conrad, you're like, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just pissed. All right. So everybody gets a long rest. Seems quiet. Seems ordinary. You wake up in the morning. Uh. <laughs> Alsana, you immediately do your little weather bulletin for the 12th of the month. Uh, you see a sun, you see some patchy clouds kind of cycling in, covering it, uncovering it. The sun really never goes, goes away, the little icon in your hand. Vague overcasts. Yeah, vague overcasts. And with that, you get up, you go out, you start the day. Also, on a like like uh, Druid craft like a handful of like flower smell and like throw it over Calda to wake her up. Oh, that smells great! What? Good morning. Basically, just like whipped a handful of like potpourri at you. All right, is this what we're doing? I'm not, I'm not gonna argue with it. Smells pretty nice. Would you prefer the lightning? Nah, I, I'll stick with flowers. Uh. Um, we need to head over to, further to the, um, uh, to the east. We need to track down that, um, 
temple proper. I feel like we're... Well, we're not dilly-dallying, but we could be making better time. Alright, do you want to take a ride out, just the two of us, or should we get the men to? Mm, I suppose that, yeah, that's if they have any other business right now. I did also have a, um... Uh, I guess I'll just say it outright. Would you like to come to a, um, bit of a, uh... Uh, hair and makeup place? I mean, you saw the face paints earlier. Oh, of course I would. That'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. Thank you. I'll dress in my nice sweater today, then. You have a nice sweater. Yeah. Do you have it's... a mean sweater, or...? I don't have a mean sweater. I have one at home. It's red, though. <laughs> All right, so you get up, uh, you go and have your breakfast. It's a nice hearty meal to start your day. You head out into the city. It's... As, real quick, as they're just eating breakfast, I'll so just say, like, I don't, ever since we started this journey, I don't think we've had a single meal that is in at least some way hearty or sticks to the ribs. It's very... You're adventurers and you need your carbs. Yep. Correct. <laughs> yeah. she, she, she's getting like picking at her like eggs and stuff. She's like, mm, it would come a long way just now and then. Yeah. Ariel. Salad next time. Ariel's worried about our carbon take. <laughs> You're also she reading wants... in a dragonborn cookies. city. Do you really think that they're going to serve salad for breakfast at this tavern? At Maybe with bacon in it. We can get a salad for lunch, probably. Yeah, we'll you can get a salad for place. lunch. Easily, you can get a salad for lunch, okay? Alright, okay. <laughs> Breakfast? Maybe not. <laughs> she's, she's like, I don't think I've ever had a light breakfast in the last, like, two months. You have. I've just never narrated one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Head out into the city. Uh... <laughs> As everybody specifies what they want to eat, um, in the chat, apparently. And, uh, it's early yet. There's not nearly the the bustle you expect there to be, but there are already some people setting up on corners, setting up their stalls or wares, or opening up their, uh, their storefronts. There is a bit of the city hum going up, people calling out, uh, Hawking this, that, or the other thing to passers-by. And you are searching for the, uh... A, uh, Sakriogaz, uh <laughs> parlor, a makeup place. Alsana is trying to find one that is more... A bit more, like, humanoid. Uh, like, human... Hair, uh, in, like, intended. Okay. <laughs> um... I'll say this might be a perception check, because you're glancing around. You are kind of searching, but it's not really an up-close investigation. By all means. Oh god. Alright, let's see the d4. So close. 29. So close. 29. 29. <laughs> like a shark scenting blood in the water. Oh my god. You spot the perfect shop. Where actually the letters uh, for the shop are actually in common first and then draconic second. Mm. So you guess that's probably a good place to start. Uh, Is Morticia there? <laughs> like, how perfect are we talking? Not quite that perfect. <laughs> would that be? Would that have been the third? How perfect would that would work out? Probably not. <laughs> Because as you, uh, as I told you out of game last time, Morticia was not wearing any of this uh, makeup, this marking. Could have gone, gone, get a haircut. You don't know. No, you don't know. Anyways. Anyhow, um, uh, you head on over. You head inside. Um, like a laser guided, laser guided goth druid. Yep. yep. Uh, your towing called after you. Uh, Kane, Elaris, Alsana has set off with a mission. You may follow if you wish to keep the group together. Whether you do or do not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
A lot of you can go figure something else to do. See if you find any rumors about the temple to the east. I have business call to come along. Yeah, I will right. go. Let us will go do that. Remember, uh, you're liking Conrad. Oh, big time like. Yep. Okay, we're gonna let Conrad recover. Hopefully, uh. Meanwhile, you have gone into, uh, <laughs> let's make it ridiculous, it's Betsy's Beauty Bar. Alright. Oh, this is really fancy. Yep. Oh, it's actually not that fancy, it's actually fairly, um, well, it's not down to earth, but Mom, it, it looks- It's homely. Uh, ni neither of those. It's a little bit elevated past that, but it's not like you walk in and there's glass chandeliers hanging from the ceiling and uh, uh, marble floors and anything. It's not that level of fancy. But, yeah, it is upstanding. It's uh, got more like the uh, the hardwood floors. Um, nice light fixtures on the walls, a couple of mirrors hanging up, uh, some comfortable chairs. Called a friend cuts her own hair fancy. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Alright. Um you're Kane's trying to find easy passage across okay, you're already across the river. You're on the right side of the river. Why are you trying to cross the river? Yes, you're in Windsor right now. You don't have to cross the river. You've got a straight shot down the hills the side of the mountain. It's a ten mile walk, man. <laughs> You're going over land here. That's half a day walking. You dingus. Or you trying to find easy passage down the river? Maybe uh, to get further into the green water? It's a little bit warmer today than it was yesterday, but you go down to like the docks area, there's Maybe some thin patches of ice. You can hear it cracking and booming a little bit here and there, but... Um... No, there are no pleasure barges because the river is not currently flowing. It's still coming out of winter. Stuff's starting to melt, but nothing is going to be putting boats out for probably another couple of weeks, perhaps. One week if it's fast, two if it's slow. Kane will go fishing as he always does when he's sad. Okay, good to know. In the meantime, in Betsy's. Of note. Yes? Uh, of note, uh, Alsana did ask that they research just the general area to the south and perhaps what could be where the temple is marked on their map, but, you know, go fishing too. <laughs> yeah, he's got to have a pick me up too. You're getting your face done. That's what I was wondering. He, she didn't mention it right now. No, she no, she said no. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll sort of drag uh, called her off and goes. Okay, we're gonna go over here. Um, you two go look and see if you can find anything with the temple to the south. Okay, bye. Ah, uh, it was very quickly said. Okay, got it. Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, you go into Betsy's. Um, fairly quiet. You're the only customers in there at the moment. It looks like. Uh, and you see a uh, kind of a shorter, um, little bit rounder human woman uh, with this fairly elaborate uh, design on her face around forehead and eyes. Uh, a lot of, like, curly cues and flourishes and uh, kind of uh, lines twisting around and weaving over and under each other. It's a really interesting effect and there's, like, two or three different colors of this uh, of this paint, this pigment, kind of weaving through the design. Um, and uh, she looks over. Oh, welcome. I don't think you've been here before. I am Betsy. It's good to meet you. So what can I do for you, dears? Well, uh, we find ourselves new in this town, and um, I'm personally curious about the uh, custom of the uh, face paint that I've come across here. Uh, also, of uh, samplers also of the we, culture. Also, we could do with a bit of a um, 
catch up to the hairs. Uh, and she kind of like looks over at Caldas, who's probably is, like not great. All right, and uh, she bustles towards you. Wonderful, wonderful. Here, let me show you some books and pa- and uh, some folders and portfolios, and we can kind of start from there. Uh, do you have like favorite colors? Do you have preference for style of design would you like elaborate would you like simple there's geometric there's floral there's organic and she just starts rattling off all these things and shows you like you've been in uh hairdressers or haircutting places various kinds you've seen the books and the magazines and we just lost uh we just lost kane conrad again um, but you've seen all of like the hairstyle magazines where it's just uh, lots of models showing off different haircuts and different angles and stuff. Where presumably you flip through it while you're waiting and then you can show the stylist, I, I kind of like this, something like this. Um, it's pretty much this, except everything is kind of drawn. You've got this very basic uh, like model face, mostly dragonborn, though there are a few human or gnome faces thrown in for kind of variety. Um, and you just see this, uh, in it, and that's done in like faint ink on each page, and in much uh, bolder ink, you see um, these various designs, these various styles. Uh, some are almost minimalistic, others are very elaborate. Um, and from like looking at uh, price lists and so on, you kind of get the impression that the simpler, the less it costs. The fewer colors, the less it costs. If you start getting into uh, multiple colors and some you're of turning the... turning your face into a peacock, it's going to cost a bit extra. Yes, pretty much. If all you want is, like, a few uh, simple, like, interlocking lines that just go, like, around the face and maybe peek a little in the forehead, it'll cost less. Um, Cost-wise, it mostly is in, like, silver and gold price ranges. Uh, there is no, like, two copper option. Um, at least not for the, uh, the scale markings. Conrad hard crashed. Oh boy. Again. Yep. It has been a day. I also will also ask, um, how long does the, uh, paint last on a person? Well, Assuming really they don't wash it off immediately. It really depends on, well, for one thing, the type of paint used. Uh, some of them, they vary in quality a lot. The most vibrant, long-lasting ones... Um, tend to be a little bit more on the pricey side, but you get the value for your money. Uh, cheaper versions, a little bit more washed out in color, they might not apply as well or last quite as long. We don't really stock those, but there are some places that do if you ever want to try your hand a few times, get into the uh, the style and the practice before going for the uh, the slightly pricier ones. I was almost gonna flick, flick uh, through but, it but, and then but the maybe... basic the basic answer is like a mid range uh pigment. Um depending on like your wear, your daily use, if you're like constantly in like if you're in like a hard labor job and like sweating a lot, not well. Uh it tends to wipe away very quickly in that case. Um but otherwise if uh it's fairly low key and uh, you're going about town some people, most people will reapply, wash off and reapply daily. However, some, like, kind of like makeup, have been known to be like, eh, it's been two days, three days, it's still holding up. Alright. So I don't know, look, I give a glance over the book, kind of hand it to Kalda and just, um, I think I'll go with, um, some of the, um, mid-tier for detail, smoother lines, um, crescents and the like. Black and gold. Preferred colors. Very well. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll go ahead and get started with you. Uh, dear, I'm afraid my help isn't in right now. Will you be alright waiting and flipping through the portfolio on your own for a little bit? Oh, yes, thank you. I just need some time to think. Oh my, that's a lot. This is interesting. Oh, it's more or less sorted by section and complexity. Uh, Find something you like and then go through the related pages. That, that helps narrow it down. Right this way, and she uh, brings Osana over to one of the comfortable scales. You can see yourself in the mirror reflection. It's very much the beautician's chair. Um, she gives you a, uh, a simple like cloth, uh, 
almost, not quite a blanket, but the, the barbershop wrap over the top of the shoulders, front of the chest, uh, <laughs> just in case. I tend to be very precise, but accidents can happen, and uh, we don't want anything on your clothes. Of course not. And she goes over to a rack just nearby, selects a couple of... Um, a couple of awesome. long brushes um, and a tin of black paint and then a tin of metallic gold. Also, and also just... Um, uh, is the uh, eye of stuff already here going to be much of an issue? Hmm. Well, usually we like to have the face washed be to begin with. Uh, oils tend to interfere a little bit with it. Uh, but for the most part, we don't actually go into the area of the eyelids. Uh, some might, but... Uh, so I can just reapply afterwards? You can, if you'd like. Alright, and she'll give her face a wash then. Okay. Yep, uh, there's a basin there for exactly that purpose. Some fresh cloths laid out, uh, um, like little chips of soap. Uh, you give your face a wash, it's clean, uh, you settle back in the chair with the uh, wrap over your shoulders. And basically, so you know as a player, the mid-range with the two colors, and especially the metallic, that tends to be just a tiny bit more as well. Um, All right. Probably would come to a total of um, mid-range. Mm. 12, 13 silver, call it 13. Do you have that much? Or would Alsana pare it down a little bit? Um, yeah, she could. Yeah, she has that much. Okay. Alright, and, um, you see Betsy unscrew the, or uncork, really, the tops of the couple of makeup containers. Uh, take a clean brush, dip it in one. She starts with the black and starts very carefully applying. And it kind of has that cold tickle of something liquid being applied to your skin and she's oh, oh, careful there don't there we go hold steady you're gonna feel it right there there we go and she just kind of keeps up this steady stream of um encouragement and just general chatter and so what brings you to the city and isn't it nice out and it's getting much warmer yes the weather's been lovely and just that kind of a uh, general barbershop hairdresser vein yeah. um uh, at the end of it, you've got a, um, you've got kind of the swooping smooth lines, the crescent curves, especially right around the eyes, uh, like one corner of the crescent near the corner of the eye, and then the curve down just along your cheekbones. Um, there's a further, like, doubled crescent shape at the center of your forehead and lines feathering out from that. Uh, little dots and accents of gold that um, kind of draw the eye to certain areas. And uh, maybe it's a little bit odd seeing your reflection with this and without your usual eye shadow. But probably not a bad odd, just different. Mm -hmm. And uh, after several minutes, uh, she. There you go, any last touches, dear? No, I think that'll be it. Um, she'll kind of, like, um, go in next. Um, but, actually, um, mm, could you just leave a... I see you have a bit of that uh, gold still out. Um, just real quick. Uh, and she'll just kind of uh, hand, hand the uh, coin over. And then just um, do her regular eyeshadow, but just with a bit of the... Um, if she can just, like, take a little bit of the gold and kind of, like, do it, like, uh, do, like, a line over the... Uh, shadow. You have like right. the little little wing. Yeah, you ask and she goes ahead and allows it. This is actually a very interesting effect. Uh, I'm not sure everybody would go for it, but I can always offer if somebody seems interested. All right. Yes, well, I, I'm sure you've got that impression for me as soon as I walked in the door. <laughs> Interest probably is a good word. Now, uh, you dear, are you ready? Have you found something you like? I don't yeah. like lean her face into where Cald is looking. Oh wow, beautiful! Uh, I found this floral. It looks really nice. Sort of the complexity of a Alsana. But could you do green and silver? Would that be all right? 
I believe I could. Do you want silver for the flowers, green for the vines and leaves? Ah, uh, yes, for you. Uh, thank you. All right, and she brings you over. Um, that might also be about the mid-level complexity, same as Alsana's with the metallic paint, so another 13 silver. Gotcha. And she uh, does up around your forehead and eyes this um, this almost effect of trailing, looping, curling vines and leaves and uh, little buds and bursts of flowers scattered pretty much symmetrically throughout with a, a single larger flower in the center of the forehead and a couple, a small line of them trailing down kind of... Um, just across the cheekbones under the eyes. About uh, the same amount of time elapses, Alsana, you are sitting and waiting in the chair for Calda to finish up, but soon enough she does, and Betsy shows you in the mirror, asks if you'd like any small changes or additional details. Oh no, it looks beautiful, thank you. Always glad to hear it, dear. Now hop off and... Uh, here you go. I'll take the... There we go. And she takes the uh, the wrap and folds it up, lays it over the back of the chair, corks up the bottles. Uh, takes the payment that you give her. Um, oh, you did ask for like minor like hair trims and so forth. Yep. We'll go ahead and say yep. that she did that at about the same time as the painting, like maybe just before so that hair didn't get into the middle of it. Um, and we'll say that, that the cost of like a minor trim was negligible enough that it's in the All 13 right. silver for the sake of ease. Alrighty. But, uh, uh, probably also, about I guess that hour... means Osana would just disassemble her entire head then um, beforehand. Yep, about an hour after you walked in, you guys walk out. Uh, brand new faces all done up. Kane, in the meantime, has gone fishing. <laughs> Would you like to roll me a couple of uh, d20 luck rolls? Just do two of them. Oh boy. Yeah. Have you gotten above a 10 this you session, my dude? Don't really catch much. Uh, they don't seem to be biting. You might catch one thing, but it's kind of on the smallish side. You might be able to make a like a meal for one out of it. That's not even the like gr like not the best kind of fish for it. Yeah. I mean it could be doable. Mm -hmm. You'd eat it if you were like traveling on your own and uh it's the best thing that uh, you were likely to come across. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's the sort of thing people might toss back. But his ribs are currently still stuck with scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yes, thank you for pointing that out. From now on, there's... Now hang on, I'm pretty sure that porridge and stuff has been had. I realize that's sort of stick to ribs because of oatmeal, but still. <laughs> Alright, fish is gone, and uh, you head back. What about Alaris? Yeah, Alaris, what have you been up to? Uh... Alaris has been trying to get rumors about the temple or whatever uh, Alsana asked him to do uh, at the start of the day. Sure. Um, are you going to go around and ask people? Or are you just hanging around and hoping to overhear something? What's your uh, mood? Ask a couple people, but mainly just see what I can overhear. All right. Like, you can like make bar runs. Yeah, yeah basically. Um, if it's mainly overhearing... Um... Basically, it comes down to, do you want to roll a perception check, or do you want to roll a persuasion check? Persuasion check. You're asking <laughs> yes, people. Persuasion. I think I'll take persuasion. That's kind of what I thought, which is why I specified. So go ahead and, yes, you're in the game, uh, if you can. Really? If your sheet will allow you. Yeah. Will allow me. So... Make a persuasion check? Yep, persuasion check. Right. 19. Ooh. Okay. Um, you through various interactions um, as you're going along, uh, 
you kind of gather that uh, you're asking about a quote-unquote a temple in the area of the shrine that you were told about? Is that what I'm getting? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, you get do get one interesting little tidbit from somebody, which is basically a um, temple. There's not really a... I wouldn't call it a temple. I mean, there's that weird cult in there, but... I'm not sure it counts as a religion. Cult? Eh, some kind of weird dragony cult thing, I don't know. Don't really go around asking questions. I mean, they're not bad ah. sorts. Nothing seems to actually, like, happen happen. We leave them alone, they leave us alone. They're just kind of weird. Ah. Yeah, I wouldn't go poking okay. around just in case. You hear enough things about that sort of people. You know? Yeah, yeah. Forced servitude type, I, I get that, yeah. So yeah, if you're uh, traveling that way down to Polk, I would take a little bit of a side path, a little roundabout. It's not hard to do. Uh, actually, that place is a <laughs> yeah. little bit off the main <laughs> path anyway, so... Yeah, stick to the big road, don't get lost. Yeah, if you start in the morning from here, you can get to Polk within the day, so you don't need to camp anywhere near them either. But that's pretty much the extent of, like, I guess, useful information that you get. It's pretty useful. Yep. <laughs> I'm guessing the party kind of meets up at a point. Yep, the yeah. party meets up at a point, uh... Right next to, like, somebody's, some dragonborn, uh, with a faint, like, coppery sheen to his scales has dragged out yeah. this cart, set up a, a little, like, soapbox in front of it and standing there hawking these, uh, lotions and potions and cures for all ills, that sort of, uh... Oh, genuine follow of butter elixir. Yep. Ha, <laughs> ha, fuck, damn it. Scales getting dull! Hair falling out. I got a fix for you. That sort of yep. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The the snake oil salesman. Quack salver and such. Okay, Kane like... is approaching this guy. <laughs> uh. Hype as you will. Uh, looks at you. And what about you? Not enough hair? I see your problem. I've got a lotion right here. We'll get those sides of your head all fluffed up again. I thought he was not doing Laris. Look, look, I look around right and like, Laris is just like getting back right now, and all of a sudden just like taps him on the shoulder, like, look, look right now, look right now, that's amazing. Oh, fuck. No, we're in need of hair, oh, but you no. know that is what I was. Ah! Uh, not enough on the chest, huh? Don't worry, I got something oh for that, God, too. You humanoids and your hair all over the place, but I've got your fixes. Oh, hairline! That's what I was talking about! Weirdness up the sides! Not many seem to go bald that pattern, but what do I know? I haven't seen it all! Is King getting called out for balding? <laughs> I hope to all gods that would listen that he is. Is that genetic? Do you know that? <laughs> mm. Well, my goodness, if it is, Father Held hit it quite well. He's a bard, he can probably that. convince someone. Right, if I see you in the tinctures and let alone a friend to see it, I'll bring your friend up if you insist, but I can guarantee every single one of these babies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're all sauna? Kane is trying oh to catch your eye. And wave you over. <laughs> He's not. She's not looking at him. <laughs> Alaris and Alsan are doing the just like covering the face. Call the keep walking. Call the keep walking. Alsan, try and pick me up. I want to see you. Okay, we're gonna keep walking. Why are we keeping walking? Fight, fight. Keep walking. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep walking. Fine. Okay, Why? That seems like a good one. Hey. Oh, hey. God. Hey. What's this now? Oh God. Can you pick me up? I want to meet eyes with Kane so I don't embarrass Alsana. You won't have been the first, my friend, and you won't have been the last to try to prove me wrong, but allow me to show you that soon you're going to be eating your other shoe. 
a Lars picked the gnome, picked the half. Damn it! Is is called a gnome half? Yeah. I'm a fucking half like you, motherfucker. Half like. Because half for two reasons. Right. Yes. Oh my god. Called to one meet as a pain in the wave. Conrad, are you having a stroke? <laughs> the dragonborn, uh, points out somebody in um, in the little bit of the uh, small group of people watching. You, Barry, and you see a halfling with a full head of hair, like it is bushing out from the sides of his head. Oh yeah, I sold you that tincture last week. How's the hair going? Fluffier than ever. It's great. Well, wig. I mean, do you, if you want to see if it's a wig, do a perception yes. check. Yes. <laughs> do a perception check. Asana like rolls her eyes and plants. Yes. <laughs> it's not a wig. Damn it! Uh, oh, right. Yeah. That's, that's. Fuck, I, I don't know why I rolled the d4. <laughs> it's, it's not a wig. Okay, like, got it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> shout, out to the, shout out to the lucky trait. That was a one. Oh, a one and a one 20. twenty. Do a luck roll just because of that. I want to see another d20 roll from you. Five. five. Okay. No, nothing special. It's okay. I'm not sure Call what would have happened, but fine. It would have became a wig. <laughs> like, Calda, Calda's gonna run up, to, run up to Kane. Hey, Kane, what are you doing? What's all this? This is fun. Oh, Calda will say in halfling to the halfling with the really nice hair. That's some really nice hair you got there. It's all real. Oh, that's really impressive. What's all this? Well, of course it's real. It's my own hair. <laughs> also, he like has up the and kind of gives a little of bit of eyes. A, reaches up both hands to each side of the head, gives a little tug. Firmly rooted. Oh, that's Wait. playing beautiful. Now, now, what do you have, Sister uh, Dragonborn Sir Kane? Who are you talking to? Oh God! Oh, I God. didn't introduce myself. Oh, God. My oh, name God. is Silksan, oh. and I have got a, a cure for everything. What have you got, huh? What do What do we need for you? Everybody needs something. Maybe something a little, a uh, little special to make the hair really shine. Real popular with the ladies. Oh, it's great to meet you. Kelda's gonna hold out her hand. My name's Alsana. Great to meet you. Alsana, what a is, pretty is name! It just all and takes hair it. Yeah, like I've a... got, I've got stuff to soften the skin. I've got stuff to take the uh, roughness out of scales. I've got stuff to brighten up the eyes, make them beautiful. There's a sound of glass shattering in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> glass. Something to brighten up the eyes. I think you gotta help my friend Kane here, though. I think I. Heard little talking about the hairline called well show all this can't, can't get down here. Get down here, look. Help. Kane Harmon will bend over. Okay. Cause it will ruffle his hair. Look at this, what can you do for him? Well, we can do a number of things. Um, but I would recommend this and he pulls out a uh, like a little jar of what seems to be an ointment. This is my patented tincture for hair growth and renewal. And he holds it out. One swipe of this, anywhere you want the hair to come back. Once a night for about a month. It's about how long the jar will last, unless you're real generous with it. And before you know it, everything's gonna be coming in full thick and lush and more so than it's ever been before. In the right, Perry! Oh, really? That's right! Can I sign just real quick, like, insight this, just to see if, like... Go ahead! Like, does he yeah, actually- Can do this too? <laughs> is there any, like, slightest yes. shred of his belief in his own hype? Calda, you got a 12. Um, it's a little hard to tell in a way because they are so loud in their enthusiasm. They're so direct and quick. Um, can't quite get a read on them. Alsana with a 21. Uh, there's just a little bit of a- Look in their eyes, and uh, you've uh, heard about these kind of characters before. You've got a sneaking suspicion that Barry might be a plant in the audience, per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Uh, sorry, didn't catch your name again. What was it again? My name is Sulksan. Ah, uh, yes, Sulksan. Thank you very much. So, what can I do for you, little lady? Uh, by the way, well, sir, just... would this be a sale? It's a bargain of a price. One silver for a jar. 
Oh, no, 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 before King continues, King, shut up, suck, Sen, shut up. Um, I was wondering what you can do for me, my friend. You've done amazing things oh. for my halfling friend, but I have a... Have a think of my husband with Smoot. What can you do for me? You said your husband was, what was it? <laughs> my husband would be proud. I have to forget what I said, honestly. I'm talking too fast. Okay. Your I'll husband like needs me. a hair tincture, too? Is my guess. No. No, he doesn't. He. Well, what can you do for me? I have my full hair. I have a beautiful face, of course. I am a married woman. I. But what do you think you're. A married woman one to of a your very serum. lucky man, I'm sure. Right. Let's see what we can do. Uh, like I said, something to brighten up the eyes, something to enlarge them almost, to make them darker, richer. He'll fall into them the next time he meets them. I've had three kids. He's fallen into them far too many times, my friend. Hmm. Maybe. Oh, perhaps and I have green eyes to... anyway. Ah, perhaps something to uh, lessen the rate of children. If you want a little bit of a break from that. Oh, I'm forty years old. I've already had my break a while ago. Thank you very much, though. Ha. Then what can I do for you? Uh, roughness of the hands. Uh, something to smooth out the skin. Get rid of those calluses. Oh, I, use... Oh, I use moisturizer every night. Thank you very. much. No. Uh, Come on, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Just with this person. <laughs> Why are you just fucking? You're just fucking with this person at this point. <laughs> Why well, not? You seem to be in excellent physical condition, Miss. I can't really do much aside from uh, making the people more beautiful or more at ease with themselves. Tell hmm. you what, well, uh, I... got a bit of a cough or a sniffle, maybe a little. Uh, Maybe a little rumble in the chest he can't quite clear up. I do have a few. Si I do have a sideline for health of the body as uh, well as beauty. Ah, uh, no, 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 sir. I don't get sick much, but I think Kane. I think we saw someone else who can probably help us out with this. Come on, we can find probably a cheaper deal with them too. Let's start going. <laughs> and Caldwell just grabbed Kane's well, hand and start good walking luck up. To you. You're not gonna find any better for any cheaper. Oh, oh that's God. what they all. What? He shrugs and goes back to. Working up the crown and finding his next. Oh, hold on. Yeah. What Check was what Kane just said. Check what Kane just. Make me beautiful sock sand? I oh, do not you know what. I'm beautiful! <laughs> Alright, I don't know where the emphasis is in that sentence. Please clarify. After beautiful. I didn't say she took my money. What can you do to make me pretty? Well. Yes, what? Hmm. Make Cain pretty. What can you do? Let me see what you can do, my friend. Well, I've, uh... Laura sees, uh, Laura sees like, a face, like, muscle spasm on Alsana. He gives you a first suspicious look and for a while. You know, you're not trying to waste my time, are you? I've already gone through the whole gamut. Stuff works for, uh, men as well as ladies and anything you'd like. Well, you heard the man. He wants to be pretty. Help him out. Help him out. Soft skin, bright dark eyes, fuller head of hair. I can offer all that. Now, I will say my scale line isn't going to do you much good, though it can do something that'll uh, polish up those teeth real nice. Are you insulting his teeth very much, sir? I think Kane has beautiful teeth. Sure, but there's always room for improvement, isn't there? Well, that just hurts people's self-esteem, don't you think, Kane? Self-esteem? I've got buckets of potions for self-esteem. Look at my cart. See, now look. he's hurt. Hmm. Yeah, he's also sarcastic, and I think you've been pulling my leg a little while, little miss. So, if you don't oh, want to buy anything... Shoo along. Oh, hey, look, Alaris, they have kebabs. Let's go have one and get ourselves away from this entire scenario. All right, very nice to meet you. Remember, if you see me again or you ever hear the name Alsana, just keep that in your ears. All right, thank you very much. Come on, Kate. I certainly will. He turns back. Anybody else? Anybody actually interested? Anybody want to not waste a poor, honest salesman's time? And he uh, just continues on in this vein forever. As oh, that was so much fun. Walk off and the voice recedes into the crowd. Like, uh, a hand drops on Kalta's head, and it's cold. 
Sorry about that, really just wanted to mess with someone. I haven't had that chance in a while. I, I go, think and I take you to a nice spa day. After we talk about trust between friends, and you pull that. I'm sorry, Elsana, I don't think you will think he'll remember more than money he makes from the other people. It is a true apology, I do apologize, but I, you may have rejuvenated me a little bit to have a bit of fun. Sorry at your expense. Elsana, Elsana like, kind of like, like, kind of like curls the fingers in uh, Kalta's hair, and just like pulls upward, and freezes it in place. Kalta's just gonna laugh. Meanwhile, I've seen worse, but this may seem a good look. Meanwhile, Kane is saying something to Alsana, if you haven't seen in the game chat yet. She looks over and she's like, Yes, but this is a public setting, and quite frankly, he's like you. They have this act that they put forward that they're infallible, and they've really only got one thing in mind, so it's not much fun. Well, I had the one thing in mind of annoying him instead of getting money, so I wasted yes, maybe- Yes, and that's, wh that's why the whole thing was boring if someone embarrassing. Oh, alright. I'll try to be funnier next time. <laughs> she, 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 like, gives a glance. It's like, I don't think effort is the issue here. I know. Come on. Caldo, like, reach your hands out. Hug. Looks... I promise I won't do it again. She puts up her pinky. She just looks and is like, just don't use my name. Okay, I'll use Alaris's next time. Don't use what? any of our names. Okay, I'll make up a name. Unless it's oh. your own. I'll make up a name next time. Just... Nope. Just, again, don't... Don't go throwing mine around. Uh, without my consent. That's how you lose bones. Good to know. I that's, don't want to lose any bones right now. Threat. That's an odd threat. It's an odd threat. It's an odd threat, but I think I deserve it. Anything I can do to win it back right now? You deserve to lose bones. I... How about I treat you to lunch? You said you wanted a salad? I got you on that. Sure. Um, Alaris, did you find anything out on your trip? Yes, apparently someone, uh, apparently the temple is, um, occupado. By? Some form of dragon cult. Oh! Oh! One around the old king. Great. Yes, uh, they, the, the locals tend to not tend to stay away from the temple, or rather, shrine. Oh, so there's the reasons not to go near there. Uh, even better. Yes. Be so, we're just, gonna clear, we're just gonna clear the place out. Well, quite frankly, we're gonna first make sure they're not just poorly misguided religious zealots. We yes. try and make as many of them. They could just be innocents. But quite frankly, if they're the kind to do sacrifices to their god, Yamad, or something like that... Well, I guess Yamad's nothing. I mean, uh, I mean, there's gotta be a reason why uh, the, the locals don't really like them that much, other than the fact that they're just kind of... I'll start to a glance, like, you'd be surprised, that's really only the only reason they need. Fair. Yeah. I don't want to kill any innocents, honestly, Lars. Neither do I, but... <sighs> Where'd you draw the line in this? Well, yes. They're not making what? sacrifices. Okay, but what about the one that was, you know, put into it by his family and uh, quite frankly doesn't really want to be there but doesn't have any alternatives and the sacrifices just happen in his periphery but he doesn't like it but he doesn't have anywhere else to go. Do I strike him down with lightning all the same? Now we're going to get, that's, now we're getting into moral gray area. Yes, that's and that's fine my, that we're getting into it. That's my worry is if you start drawing lines, the lines aren't exactly going to be clear cut and we can't exactly be holding back. Yeah. All right. All right. If they hurt us first, then we can hurt them. That's Actually, how I'll I, go with this. I can live with that. Um, property damage? Are we concerned? Yeah, outside of the uh, shrine itself. That is. I'm okay with property damage. I mean, I'm not taking the shrine, so you guys go whatever. 
pretty diamond just fine unless it's not the shrine. But if it looks pretty, then we can try not to destroy it. I suppose so. Alright, well, we're going to have to find more information on them, and then we can head out. It's not that far of a trip. Yeah, it's about yes. midday, maybe a little bit before now. You can easily get a lunch and go out there and get there around evening nightfall, about the time you might make camp normally. It's up to you. Or you can stay the uh, rest of the day here, set out bright and early, and get there around midday tomorrow for travel time. Do you think it's safe to camp near a cult? Mm, I doubt they're that organized that they have spec ops checking the area. And quite frankly, mm. if they do and we run into one, well, that really just solves our questions. Of whether or not they'll attack first? Okay, good to know. But more yes. importantly, I think we should leave in the morning because we could have a bit of time to ask around about it a bit more. We have a lead. Well, our yes. Yes. That, but now we have a topic to bring up to other people. Yes, I'm yeah. Maybe they have their fingers in some pies in this town. They're pretty close enough for it. Yeah, they're in a close enough proximity. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a confidant the of the city. And, and it's the seat of royalty, where the throne is, and the throne that likely uh, was the seat of their um, kind of cultist obsession. If it is the cult of the old green dragon king that I've heard about, yes. who knows? Might be a new one, new wave. Yeah. yeah. Thing. It's called the Green River, so we could assume a little bit, but... Well, the Green River is named after the king, and from my research, the cult is also after the king. Ah. Well, even if we do go asking about it, we should maybe watch out, just in case they may have ears around. Some of them may come to the town, go bar hopping, or cultists do when they're off time, and they could have ears if we ask the wrong people, they may get a little worried. I suppose, but there's only so much they can do to prepare against lightning strikes. That's true. You can never expect lightning. Unless you can. You have your... I'm, I'm just saying weather. that um, outside of us getting kidnapped in the night, which, let's not rule it out, but... You know, uh, reasonability here. Um, I don't see much that's... I don't, we're, we're intending to wipe them off their little residence. Yeah, they're, going to be, think... they're going to have a slight against us one way or the other. If it's a few days earlier, so be it if we know what we're getting into better. Yeah, I just think... It's not like... Yeah, well, it's not like all of us. So. She also well, looks I... over uh, like, uh, yeah, mm, I was, I would have been inclined to believe you earlier, but I get the feeling that these shrines just happen to attract bad omens, maybe as a result of being used by those certain people earlier, but I don't think they have their their. I don't think any strings are being directly pulled. Well, I have a new good luck about me. Um, maybe I can go and ask around the town. Yeah, perhaps we can all do. Let's go find a. Some some sort of restaurant or something. Should we stay around where our inn is, or different ones, bigger ones? Find a ones. good congregation of people. Yes. Yeah, you're right, Kane. Let's not assume. You're. We should find out intentions first. Talk first, maybe, just in case. I've not assumed their god. I've assumed the subject of their obsession, given historical evidence. Difference. Talk first. So, Salad first, and then research. Yep. You go looking that for a it. place to eat. Um, I'll say you find a place, no difficulty. Uh, it's a little uh, mom and pop type shop. Little uh, building in the wall called Zoop Soups. Mm. Z O O P. Beautiful. Soups. Zoops. Zoop soups. And uh, they have soup, they have salad, they've got fresh baked bread. I was like, I like, looked that up at it and just like, huh. Is there, is there What's your soup for the day? Is there going to be a single establishment here that isn't a pun or rhymes? Probably not. And she walks in. No. What do you take me for? You walk <laughs> in. Uh, 
delightful older gnomish gentleman running the place. Uh, his name is not Zoop, uh, yes. but his granddad's name was, and he's the one who founded it. So they kept the name, and they've kept the place in the family. Uh, yes. So, uh, uh, what? It, well, hi, sir. Well, hello. Have a seat. Have a seat. I'll be right around with the menu in just a moment. I'm helping these people right, right over yes. here. And here is over, and there's like, uh, there's honestly like six tables in the place. Um, before there's not enough space for the back room. Um, uh, four of them are currently, um, in use, occupied full. Uh, there's huh. a couple here, a small family there, a little group of friends over there. Um, most of them seem to have, or they're in various stages of starting or finishing meals. Um, you sit down, menus are brought. It's a fairly, like, it's not expansive, but there's a basic array of easy fix salads. And then there's the like soup two. Of the day? There are two soups of the day, and uh, on the little cards written in, um, there is the uh, the chicken and rice, and then there is the um, the hearty seafood. Mm. I know hearty is in there, but whatever. It's spiced seafood. Let's call it that. Mm. There's a little star by the spiced seafood one, and then. Uh, little uh, star underneath at the bottom of the print and uh, bottom of the card in small print it says spiced means spicy <laughs> we'll, look yeah. over, we'll glance over the menu and just also if if ever the um the owner comes back yep he does pretty short order he scampers on over uh, with a little flip pad and we'll a take a double order of chicken noodle yeah okay i'll find a order probably in a green salad of some sort. Yep. Um, but while they're ordering, just um, I don't suppose you're much of an ear to the rumors around town, are you? Eh, sorry, what's that? I don't suppose you know much rumors around town, do you? I can't abide the things. Hmm. Uh, and she looks over and just like, uh, and just like, and just like leans over to who I've probably called as she's beside and she's like, I don't even think you understood what I said, but. Well, I don't think thing. so either. Maybe he's be a lost cause. We'll find some more instead of. Yeah, he repeats back your order and needs to be corrected on a couple of things, but gets it in the end. Scurries back to the kitchen. Uh, short wait. Green olives, green. Yeah. Chicken noodle. Oh, we don't have noodle. It's rice. It's chicken rice. Uh, as, for rice, as for cream, fine. we don't really do cream on salads. I can try and make an exception, but it's not. Green taste. olives. Oh, green. oh, like, okay, yes. Brown things, you know. <laughs> no, I got it now. Takes it to the back room. Uh, in in fairly short amount of time, um, you have your bowls of soup. You have your... <laughs> Yeah, he was about to go back there and like, uh, like cream up some olives and dollop them on top. He was that close. Um, you get your soups, you get your salads. Everything is correct, thanks to a little bit of extensive uh, repetition. I thought I might just, like Druid craft some images up. Okay. Um, but you're able to have your meal. It's fresh. The soup is hot. It's good. What would you like to do with your afternoon? Alright, oh. we need to find more about this cult. It's yes! Just, I'll say if somebody wants to mark off, like, collectively, uh, probably, like, two silver for the whole group. It's not mm -hmm. an expensive Probably's eatery, but okay. And, uh, would you like to make some rolls for finding information now? Just finish off this, uh, 20, 25 minutes, or should we yep. call it done there? Yep. Who's ready? Um, we, we could just do a real quick check for okay. anything we have to cover us. Real quick check. Okay, mm -hmm. anybody who's searching, if you are just hoping by chance to overhear something, yeah. um, it would be... Let's uh, it yeah, uh, Alaris will like, actually legitimately ask around again about yes. like, the pot. The Asana is specifically going to look for any like iconography or any... like. Okay. Basically, anyone who looks like they might be associated with it in any way. In that case, that would be, um, if you're looking for iconography specifically, it would be, um, 
investigation, I think. Would it be, uh, I mean, just... Oh, or for, like, broader looking? Yeah, she's um, just, like, going around town seeing if there's anything that is, like... Like, she like she catches, like, any sort of, like, um... I don't know, like, green banner with something on it or something. Mm, okay, go ahead and do your perception. Alright. Um... Actually, did you were you the one who read about the history of it? I'm pretty sure you were. Yep. Uh, first, go ahead and make a history check, just for general recall. All right. I'm not going to um, say it's it's not a guidance thing. Uh, this is more like back of the mind as you're going over options. Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah, that's a fucking two. Ugh. Yeah, green is a good enough guess. Green, maybe dragon scales, dragon shapes. Uh, go uh, ahead and do your guidance to perception. Alaris is persuasion with a 12. Uh, perception 12 plus your 1d4. 13. Fuck. Is anybody else doing their stuff? You've got perception for 13 for Kane. Call a persuasion of 22. All right. So for the most part, uh, you guys are going around and... Um, Kane, are you just kind of listening in general? Feel free to type in the thing. I'll answer in a second. Uh, for, um, let's see, Alsana looking around for anything green, anything dragony, anything specifically green dragony. Um, mixed results, honestly. You are spotting just plenty of the color green. There are colors galore in this city. They are everywhere of every hue, shade, and, uh, tint, and you are, um... You're coming across so much green because it's a city of dragonborn with a draconic history. You're coming across so many dragons. Uh, you're finding, like, there's... <laughs> at one point, you're finding, like, a little, like, kid's puppet show of... Uh, little, uh, like, this green dragon puppet going... Rawr! And she uh, just, like, runs her face and keeps walking. Kids are watching and... Woo! Yep. Um, well, she pinch pinches her nose. She Her makeup's nice right now. Yep, okay. You're careful of the uh, upper part of the face. Um, you uh, pretty much rove around, maybe with the group, maybe on your own. It's up to you. Um, kind of uh, keeping an eye out, not really finding anything that you would really pin as, ah, cult, ah, dragon-worshipping group. Um, let's see, Kane is going to shadier parts of hound, town blah, 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 to hear about cults. Churches in the shady areas. Uh, yeah, you kind of managed to find your way to some of the more rundown, the seedier parts. Um, as far as churches go, there might be a few various temples and shrines, but they're all to, uh, like, gods that you might at least recognize the emblem as familiar. You're not coming across anything that looks really weird or unusual. Again, no, like, green dragon or anything re obviously related iconography. It's stuff that you've seen in other towns and cities before. Um, yeah, not you're not digging much up. Um, Elaris, you're kind of having the same problem. You're, perso you're pretty personable, but um, you're not really getting people into the conversation. You're getting a lot of what, no? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Or else you're getting just even more basic versions of the information you got before. Um, not focusing on dragons, any kind of small group, but yeah, the role is the role. Uh, I'm kind of sticking with it. You're not coming across any, like, uh, I mean, there might be, like, a little gang of teenagers or something that shuffles off into an alleyway, but uh, it's the sort of thing where it's like... Try not to physically assault them. Yeah. <laughs> Their, their behavior does not speak of um, we are up to shady business so much as uh, we're up to no good and our parents are going to kick our butts if they find out. Teenage is the worst cult. Calda. Calda, yeah. you're a little charmer right now. Uh, <laughs> you are... Um, maybe it's just luck. You're uh, that halfling rumored feet of uh, good fortune favoring you once again. Um, maybe it's just that you've got that friendly little face. You're disarming. You are, you've got your uh, oh, face man. all done up. You've got your hair trimmed neatly just this morning. Uh, frozen a little bit recently, but didn't do any actual damage to it. Um, 
you are talking to people and you kind of get some of the same information that Alaris brought, but a little bit more detail in there. Um, you kind of get the, uh, the impression just over a series of conversations. They've been there pretty much forever. Nobody's really gone and, like, kicked them out or anything. They haven't been a problem for anybody. There's been no, like weird disappearances or happenings or magic or anything like that. They're just kind of, they just kind of hang out there. It's like a little, uh, it's like they're being a little, uh, a very exclusive village or something that kind of keeps to itself. That maybe has some secrets. Day. Yeah. Um, they don't really, like, go out and around and stuff, but... There, there might be one interesting little uh, rumor, a little bit wild and out there, and the other people around are just, ah, that's nonsense. Uh, but there's this rumor that, no, they're actually, they, they do have, like, these great magical powers, but, um, and if you're, like, if you're, like, true of heart or something, you can actually go to them, and they'll share them, and if you really need it, they'll actually help you, and it's like, oh, no, come on, what are you talking about? Yeah, nobody goes there. It's just... Yeah, okay, so maybe there's some, like, little hamlets and villages around that might do something stupid, but... Yeah, nobody messes with a cult. That's... All right. About what you get. Good to know. Oh, God. All right. So after this uh, scattering and gathering of what information you can and maybe can't find, uh, you reconvene. This is perhaps shared, I assume. Yep. Sun's eyes light up at the like sharing magical talent and stuff like that. Like, oh, hmm. Pure of heart, which is difficult to get to. She she like looks. Uh, what are you implying? I'm implying that no one's fully good or bad. Oh, I take offense to that. You frosted my hair maybe two hours ago. And? Moral standpoint, how do you- nah, yeah, I deserve How would the gods judge a light muscle of hair? This is true, but who's going to be judging us of pure of heart? The, go the gods, or the people? Well, I'm not going to freeze their hair, so... Assuming they have any. You can freeze the scales, maybe, if they start being intimidating. That causes pain, usually, so... Alright, that being done, a uh, good chunk of your afternoon. You might have a little bit of evening time left. But I presume that you go back to the Torn Tome. Yep. You stay one more night. Mm -hmm. Rest up, and yep. you are ready to go the next morning. Let's go ahead and call it there as it's getting late. Yep. A little bit yeah. shorter, but yep. not bad. It looks like we're at a little uh, under two yeah. and a half hours, actually. So, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, given the uh, horrible, horrible start to all this. Horrible, oh, horrible. It's doable. Oof. Okay. So, if anybody wants to bring something up before we end this, feel free. Nah. All right. Until next time. Hoping for better. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, tech, please be kind to us. Uh.